is only one place to start. Danny Murphy, what have we just seen? Do you know what? I feel like emotional. I've got goosebumps watching the celebrations. I mean, it's it's personal to me. I mean, I was there as a kid watching. I've been there as a player, and it just brings back a lot of memories. But they achieved something insurmountable tonight in many respects. They lost Firmino, Salah. Um, they were unlucky in the last game. City have won last night. How they picked themselves up to produce that energy and that quality um, is amazing. And the manager deserves great credit. The players deserve great credit. Even the problems they had during the game with Milner going to left back. But the initiative to get the winner from... Um, uh, Trent, Trent Alexander-Arnold, sorry. And Origi. Trying to remember it, all was that many goals. <laughs> and Origi, in, in such a frenetic situation, the calmness shown by that young man. What a player he is, by the way. But we were talking earlier about trying to single out performances. It was a team performance, which is why they got through, helped by a wonderful crowd, a wonderful atmosphere. And we could eulogise about all those players tonight because every single one of them was top drawer. It was just sensational. It was absolutely incredible. Be honest, Liam. How much of a chance did you give them before the game? Slim to none. Slim to <laughs> none. Like, honestly, like, it's just that I've got goosebumps and yeah. I don't have an affinity with Liverpool, but it's why we love the game. Tonight is why everyone loves football. It's the best thing in the world. Forget sport, it's the best thing in the world. And for me, I'm so happy for Jurgen Klopp. I'm so happy for everyone at Liverpool because they didn't deserve what happened in the first leg. No. They were outstanding in the first leg with their bravery. They went to press. I've never seen a Barcelona team have to make a defensive change at home. And, and they won 3-0 through the magician that is Messi. And what Liverpool have shown is, with bravery, playing on the front foot, not man-marking Messi, stopping things at source. And, and the reason that the likes of Origi comes into the team, outstanding, Shakiri comes into the team, Jurgen Klopp has been working on playing that way for two or three years. Absolutely incredible. And when you most need it, those players are fit because they train so hard. They're fit, they can come in the team and produce performances like that. Milner fills in a left back for me, the, the, for Robertson, the best left, left back in the world at the moment. Absolutely incredible performance, but with a process and a plan behind it. Absolutely outstanding. And I'm delighted to see because they were going to be the biggest hard luck story in football. You know, Man City are on the verge of winning a title. 97 points in any other league, in any other time, would win you the title. And for me to see them go into a Champions League final is no short than what that club deserved. I mean, Jurgen Klopp deserves special praise because his mannerism, they say it's about man management a lot these days at the top level in football. He said yesterday, he said, look, it's like this. OK, we don't have Firmino, we don't have Salah. They have Messi, they have Suarez, but we'll try and win give it again. a go. Yeah. And if we win, great, you know. He's honest, he's realistic, irrelevant of his, chari uh, his charismatic personality, if you like. What he does day in, day out on the training pitch is work on a system, um, which is one thing, and he does that well, but he also has a squad of players who play for him. Now, what it showed to me tonight, yes, there's a tactical plan. Fitter and stronger, yeah, of course, that, that is obvious, but desire and passion of a group of players to work as one. Rather than a reliance on, you could argue, you know, Barca are reliant on Messi, we know that. They've got all the wonderful players. But that tonight was a team performance that comes from a togetherness created by the management, in my opinion, and the players and the management deserve credit together for that because that performance, you, I, I couldn't single out the best player for Liverpool tonight. There was some... You couldn't give man of the match? No. no. I honestly couldn't. You could put an argument for most of them. I mean, I, I, midfielder, Henderson, Ronaldo come on... Uh, Ronaldo come on and scored two. Fabinho. Uh, I mean, it, it was... You're just going to list the whole lot, aren't you? Because they were that <laughs> good, but, which is understandable. But what I'm trying to say is that that team ethos and that character shown by the players is because they're given an environment every day so that, that fact, builds that. To be... To, to split hairs, it was a squad performance that won that. Yeah. The fact that he's got players willing to come in, give them every ounce of sweat they've got, and they haven't been necessarily first choice of late. But like, like you said, they were fit enough as well. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's the hardest thing for the likes of Origi and, and Shakiri to come in to a game like that. You have to come in and you're playing at the highest level. Now, so to do that, 
to come in for a game and play at that level, you have to be training day in, day out the training ground at the top of your level. And that goes down to the manager. That goes down to the manager and, and the, yeah, the process and the saying. detail that goes in every day into training. But what about the job he did on them mentally, Klopp? They've come away from there, 3-0 down from Camp Nou, and he said to them, listen, mm. we were the better team on the night, 100%. we had the better chances. Now, you know, it's like you two are pros, you can't kid you. Know, you you can't kid you guys. They went out there believing. In hindsight, you know, losing 3-0, but if you take the goals out of that game, yeah. who was the better team? Liverpool were the better team. And the, that would have played a part in Barcelona's performance tonight because how many teams go to the new camp and dominate possession, press them, put, take them in positions they don't want to be in? If it wasn't for Messi's performance on the night, Liverpool were a better team. The process, I, we, we spoke about it at Brighton as, as coaches. What would you have changed about Liverpool's performance in the first leg? Very little. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. He had to make a defensive substitution, bring, bring some made one for Vidal in the first game. For me, it's a huge mistake him starting with Sergio Roberto right back today. Yeah. And, but Liverpool took advantage of every little thing they could take advantage of, they took advantage of. And I remember when Klopp first came into Liverpool, people were questioning his fitness regime and, and the way that he worked plays. They got mm. a lot of injuries. Yeah, it took him but, a while to get it right. But it? because of that, they have now got the fittest squad in the league. And that's the reason they're pushing Manchester City all the way to the, to the, to the title as well. Absolutely incredible job that he's done. And to see the picture at the end, they stood in front of the cop. Gave me goosebumps, absolute yeah. goosebumps. The whole squad, absolutely incredible. I understand what you're saying. You cannot pick out a man to be man of the match, and I think you probably agree, Liam. Yeah. But would you agree that probably the moment of the match was that quick corner and Origi? Because the audacity to do that to Barcelona, this is the mighty Barcelona, to have the audacity, it's the confidence, and the intelligence. Intelligence, to do that. intelligence, um, quick thinking, courage. Uh, it was a good finish, actually. But, but that summed up the performance. They he were he feels free enough to express himself yeah. and do that. Give like a the young platform player. from the manager. And, and I'll tell you another moment, the second goal. You watch Alexander Arnold's reaction to losing the ball. Yeah, we talk, we laugh yeah. about Gagan pressing and counter pressing, and we say these, these in vogue words. Watch the second goal back. Most players, their most natural way to, to react to losing possession is to go backwards. Alexander, Lu, Alexander Arnold loses the ball, he goes straight brilliant. to the ball, wins it back, crosses it, goal. That's a process that's implemented, been implemented by Klopp over many years. And that's why, at the highest level, those things come out. The ball in for the, for the goal from Alexander Arnold on the fourth goal is absolutely incredible. But he's, got the, the, he's allowed to go and express himself and see the game the way he plays. It. It's just an absolute what a player he is, watch. by the way. Can I just try to say one thing? There, there's something, the footballing performance, the fitness, the energy, all the things we talked about. Make no mistake, last night in the hotel, Liverpool players were watching City. Yeah. Can you imagine? Well, I can imagine because I've been there. Seeing a goal fly in from a centre half <laughs> that you're probably thinking, that's done us. Knowing the next day, you've got to wake up and go, they got away with it yesterday, if you like. Company scoring a 30 yard, and now we've got a 3 0 deficit against. But it, they would have been forgiven for feeling a bit sorry for themselves. None of it. None of it. And that comes from what you're talking about before, which is the day to day environment, the belief, mm. the, the freedom to yeah. play and have a go, express themselves. There were stages in that game tonight. Well, Liverpool's line was so high. Yeah. If Barca had a few players willing to run behind a bit more, mm. I mean, they had a couple of chances. They had that yeah. one great one first half where Alba got in, didn't Alba he? Alba got in, Messi. Messi, yeah. But the courage to do that is what yeah. you're talking about, and I think you're spot on. But there's a game to go, so let's not get carried away. But that tonight... Oh, that will live long in the memory. Long in the memory. Incredible. Someone's okay. won some money tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't they? I'll come on to... Not you. I'll come on to, I'll, I'll come on to the final shortly but that's now four seasons in a row where Barcelona have gone out because they've been humped in the away leg what does that does if that you isolate you that there is a weakness yeah they, the, the problem is they're so dominant in their own league and I've been for a while now that changing the dynamic of how you play to that mm. Champions League most teams you play try and play good football but Liverpool play with an intensity and a pressure so that live. they're not used to um, what it did show, the last two legs for me with Barcelona, is that there's a lack, lack of athleticism in midfield. You can have a lack of athleticism if you've got Iniesta, Xavi and Busquets. Mm. But Vidal, um, Busquets now, who is a wonderful player, of course, but they, they, they couldn't match the energy. Yeah, Rakitic. They, they, Rakitic, another one, he's 32. Yeah. The 30. thing is, they play in a way that their structure and system is so un-Barcelona-like. You know, it's, a, it's an old... 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah, and, and when Busquets has always been the best in a midfield three deep yeah. line, 
they look like a team of players that, w when they're really pressed, when you play 4-3-3, you have an extra option in midfield to play through, to play out of the press. They didn't have that because they were so busy worried about Liverpool's yeah. dominance in terms of them pushing them back. That's why Vidal was playing right midfield, was to stop Robertson. They were so worried yeah. about Liverpool's strengths through the, through the two legs. And I've never seen a Barcelona team have to adjust their game for, 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 another, for another side. What? It goes to show what a strong team Liverpool are at the moment. What did they get wrong, Barcelona? Uh, listen, full credit to Liverpool, but if you were being critical of Barcelona, what did they get wrong, in particular about playing at Anfield? Didn't do the basics right, which is winning seconds, matching runs, playing percentages. When you've got a 3 in a lead, you have to play percentages. Mm. Play some long balls, turn them, out, turn them around, take your time. Don't play into Liverpool's hands. I mean, Barca will always try and play, I get that. They're not going to become a long ball team just for one game. But for 20 minutes, you can go long. You can manage the game. But ultimately, they didn't have the legs. Mm. I mean, it's a flip. It's very easy to say they didn't have the legs. When I say don't have the legs, you don't have to be as quick as somebody to try and match the run. You don't have to be quicker yeah. than somebody to stay with them or go for a second ball. Mm. But they're so used to having the ball, and they just couldn't cope th with the intensity. I think it's more you've got to give credit to Liverpool. I think it's more because there were times where the, centre, the, the, the fullbacks were pressing in line with the 18 yard box. Yeah, you're pressing, right. Liverpool's fullbacks were pressing at Barcelona's fullbacks in line with their own 18-yard box. Liverpool centre-halves are willing to go and engage halfway inside Barcelona's yeah, half. You're right. They're not used to playing against a team that does that to them. It was right, it was it, Jeff trying to get me to be negative. That, that performance is, is two, three years in, in the work. You couldn't, get, you couldn't say to any team out there, after a year of working with them, right, we're going to go and press Barcelona all over the pitch. But Klopp's been working on his system for three years at that club, and that was the pinnacle. That performance day was the pinnacle in it. Tactic, tactically, physically, technically, it was absolutely incredible. But that's three years of work that's gone into that performance, not just in the second leg, but the first leg. And another oh. final. Rega regardless of who wins tomorrow night between Ajax and Tottenham, are Liverpool now favourites, in your opinion? Strong favourites. Can't see... I mean, one-off games, you can never tell. Um, sending off, excuse me, a wonder goal. Anything can happen, but you'd make Liverpool favourites. Yeah. Because they can match Tottenham and Ajax in both departments, mm. the football, the energy. But you never know. I mean, the, the one thing I would say is that trophies are important, but even if, and I'd hate it to happen, Liverpool lose that final and lose out on the last day to Man City, I think the progression they've made... The standards they've set themselves are amazing, mm. and I don't think for one second the season would be classed as a failure within the club, maybe by some supporters, because they like silverware, even if they did miss out. But I think they'll win it now. So would you put to bed forever that old football expression? We've all heard it a million times. First is first, second is nowhere. My memories are winning trophies. So let me be clear on that. The best memories of my career, looking back to the finals we won. And the worst ones, the one I lost. But when you look at progression of a football club, which is what the owners do and what supporters are doing, supporters are there for ever. Yeah. You know, the players are there temporarily. Mm. Liverpool are moving forward and quickly. Mm. OK, Liverpool is steeped in history and winning trophies. And actually, what's the point of having this wonderful journey if you're not going to win something at the end of it? But you cannot tell me that this club is not... The, the way they're playing, the style they're playing, the points tally they get, they are competitive now. Yeah. Two years, Champions League final. Yeah. 97 points possibly at the end of this season. Now, I don't care whether there's a trophy at the end of that. There's one coming. Yeah. For, yeah, There's for me, I, I didn't win that many trophies in my career, so I'm not qualified to say. I think, obviously, winning is the most important thing, by far. But what needs to be understood more and more and more is to win consistently now at the level of football you play, you have to have a process. You yeah. have to. You, we, we talk about Manchester United going out, signing Pogba, all of these... What Sanch, Alexis Sanchez at the time was probably the best winger in the league. If you don't have a process in place now, you're not going to win. And the first game, for me, was a lesson in the process, because the process was right. Even though they lost 3-0, yep. the process was absolutely right, and Klopp knew that and played exactly the same way at home, and they get their just reward. So, in terms of finish, finishing first, yes, it's mo by far the most important thing. There has to be an understanding of, with fans now, it, when managers are getting sacked every six, every six weeks now, there has to be a long-term process in place if you want to win trophies. Whether, if it's, yeah, whether it's for this Champions League final, Liam, or the Premier League next season, what will that result 
and that performance do for that particular group of I players? Think if, you, if you look at the, 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 age, the, ages of the, the age of that squad, you see, you're seeing a team that can go on for years, for years playing at that level. And that's the scary... Alexander-Arnold, Robertson, Virgil van Dijk still a very good age. Salah's, not, Salah's still young. Mane's still a young man. They've, and seeing that squad together in front of that cop, Talking about trophies, that's a, that's a memory that will stay with them and bring that club even closer together Correct. in the future. So for me, they can go... They, we're so fortunate in England right now that we have Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool and Pep Guardiola at Manchester City. For me, two of the best teams that ever played in the Premier League. I've, I said about Manchester City last season, the best team in the Premier League. And now you've got a club and a team pushing, for me, the best ever team in the Premier League all the way. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. I mean, when you look back at tonight, as it, as it <laughs> unfolded, you, you literally, you went from... You, you always believed because your affinity <clears throat> with the club. I didn't. I didn't but always believe. You didn't want to, it was as though you didn't want to believe yourself. I think when they went 2-0, I thought, here we go, because you can hear the roar and you know what, especially into the cup end. But I always thought they might just tire him with Messi and the quality that Barca had. And a couple of times in the first half, you know, you don't want to believe, really. You're mm. trying to convince no, they can't. Oh, yes, they can. And... I just got carried away with it in the end and, and, you know, it's interesting what you say because, yes, being a Liverpool fan growing up, having the fortune to play there and win trophies, it's easy for me to say how it feels. Mm. And I've, I've stood on the cup on a pitch, done all of that. But for you to say you felt it mm. gives, you know, gives the, the reality to it for me. People feel that emotion that comes out of those supporters and these nights at Anfield. And this ain't a one-off. No. I mean, it's a special place. It's yeah. unbelievable. I, I, I remember once, I don't know if you were there, when Gerard Houllier had, had been ill. Um, yes. And then nearly passed away, if you remember. And yes. his first game back was a European night against Roma. And yes. And to win by two clear goals. They put up a um, mosaic for Gerard, right, didn't they? Yeah. Um, and we won 2-0. And, and the emotion and the, the atmosphere, I mean, OK, it wasn't quite that tonight, but... The mem there's so many, the Madrid game, yeah. the Olympiacos game, I mean, it goes, on, goes on, on and on. Uh, I, I think that's the best ever at Anfield. I well, can't think of one that comes close. In terms of semi-final against that quality. Well, <laughs> bizarrely, probably the only comeback that that's beaten by is yeah. Istanbul yeah. in 2005. <laughs> but over two legs, I mean, thinking <laughs> Barca, PSG... Yeah, that's... Yeah, but... Uh, I just cut I always thought that Liverpool were going to have to score five. The, the fact they've kept a clean sheet yeah. against that quality as well. And they've, they, they rode their luck at times, a few last ditch tackles, a couple of good saves from Madison. But for me, they deserved that luck with the way they attacked the game. They deserved their luck from the way that they believed in their way of playing and they stuck to it. Through. They went away from home and attacked Barcelona. Absolutely, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. brilliant. You said it earlier, over two legs, they're a better team. By far, by far the better team. Right? Better team legs. by far.